You know Dasher and Dancer and Dancer and Vixen Comet and Cupid and Donner and Blitzen But do you recall the most famous reindeer of all? Had a very shiny nose, and if you ever saw it, you would even say it goes. All of the other reindeer used to laugh and call him names. They wouldn't let poor Rudolph join in any reindeer games. Then one foggy Christmas Eve. Santa came to say Rudolph with your nose so bright Won't you guide my sleigh tonight Then all the reindeer loved him And they shouted out with glee Rudolph the red-nosed reindeer You'll go down in history Hi, I'm Bonner. It's that most wonderful time of the year and you want to quickly master a Christmas holiday song, so let's dive in. Today we're going to look at Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer. That's our song. This, our first step in looking at learning a song is to break the song into chunks so we have small pieces we can work on. As you can see on your screen, Rudolph is already organized into different chunks, so we're going to begin with the main chorus, the part that goes Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer. Our next step is to have a look at the two chords that make up this part of the song, C and G7. You probably already know these, but let's review just in case. Here's the C chord. Here's the C chord. Pointer on B string, middle on D string, ring on A string. Okay, and there's your C chord. And next is the G7 chord. Um, and that's this one. Those are the two chords. As you probably know, it's changing from one chord to the next that is where most new players have a challenge. So let's review how our chord changes go to make sure that that is as easy as possible. So here's the C chord. Here we have our C chord. And we're going to review our, our steps to get to the G7 chord. Now, this is a different way of playing G7 or G, but this is often used, this is kind of an advanced method, and we use this method because it's very simple and very quick. So just stay, bear with me. I'm going to move my pointer by one string. It stays on the same fret, but my pointer is going now onto the E string. I'm going to push my middle finger up onto A and my ring finger up onto the low E string. And now when I strum that, that's a nice G7. And you can see what a simple motion it is. And when I go back, I'm going to bring these top two fingers and drag them each down, so rings going on to A, middles going on to D, and I'm going to bring my pointer up onto B, and now I'm back on C. And it's a good idea to practice those step by step, back and forth a few times until they become comfortable. Now let's learn how to do the strumming. Rudolph uses one of the most popular strumming patterns in guitar. This strumming pattern is called pluck and strum, and I'm going to show you what that is. Okay, I'm going to play, first of all, uh, Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer. So here's what I'm doing. Step one, I pluck on the root note of the C chord, which is the A string. Okay, that's what I'm doing with my thumb. And we call that the thumb stroke. And then we're going to strum just the top three strings. So I'm going to bring my hand up a little bit so I'm not strumming all across the whole guitar. And I'm just going to go uh, down, up. Okay, and, uh, and there's a link up above here to my doghouse roof video where I'm going to talk about this strumming technique in more detail. So have a look at that, it will help you. Okay, so our first pattern is thumb down up. And I'm, and I'm putting a little diagram of the rhythm pattern on the screen so you can see how this is. Now in terms of keeping track of rhythm, we have to do a little bit. And so we're going to count this as one two and, just like this. One, two and, one, two and. That's the first half of our pattern, okay? 
And now we're going to do the second half. The second half of the strumming pattern is just a slight variation. This time we're going to do the same thing, pluck, and then strum the top three strings. But with the pattern we're going to play on the strumming part is called a triplet. So we're going to play up, down, up, like this. And the way we count that to keep track of a rhythm is we're going to count two is a... Uh, those three strums are a little bit closer together than the ones we just did. So here's the second half of the pattern anyway. Thumb, two is a... Uh, I'm going to count it. One, two is a... Uh, okay, we play it. Thumb, up, down, up. So let's just take a moment and we're going to practice those two patterns together. One, two, and... One, two is a... Uh, so now, if I put those two together, I'm going to get this effect. And you may need to practice this a little bit. Take your time. This is a really, really great way to invest your time because you're going to use this strumming pattern in so many songs, it will make your head spin. Okay, let's try it. One, two, and one, two is a one. Sorry. One, two, and one, two is a one. Okay, so now we know our first two chords. So now we have our first two chords and we've reviewed the chord changes and we've practiced our strumming pattern. Let's grab a little chunk of the song and get playing. First line of the song is just the C chord. We're gonna play our whole strumming pattern two times. Here it is. And now I'm going to play it and I'm gonna sing along. see how that fits together. Just a little note, we're often working from very simple sheets that just give us the words and the names of the chords. So how do we know how long to play each chord? When it's a song we've listened to before, our brain has already stored all the information in our memory of that song automatically. That happens when you're listening to music. So we access those memories and they help us play the song correctly, help us with our phrasing, simply by singing along, which is why I'm singing along here. If you're uncomfortable singing out loud, don't worry about it. Just sing along in your head, mumble along, even if you talk along. It will access the memory of that uh, lyric and the timing of that line, and it will really help you a lot as you're practicing and trying to learn the song. Okay, so here we go. I'm going to play that just that one line once again. Rudolph the Red Nose Reindeer. Okay. Now we're going to do the exact same exercise that we just did, only this time we're going to do it with the second line. And you'll notice in this line that we have a G7 chord. It has, uh, there's a C and then a G7. Usually chord changes in the middle of a line are divided in some even way that fits with the rhythm of the song. So we're going to experiment. We're going to try singing and playing one strumming pattern of C, that's this. And then we're going to try one strumming pattern of G7. And we're going to see if that fits. It's a good place to begin. So here we go. Had a very shiny nose. And you can hear how that seems to be the right place to change the chord. Had a very shiny nose. There we go. And again, if you're having trouble singing out loud or you're shy about it, just sing along in your head. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to glue those two lines together and that'll be our first chunk of the song. So the first line is just two times through the C, two patterns of the C, and the second line is one pattern of C and one pattern of G7. And I'm just going to take you through that right now. Try and play and sing along with me. I'm going at a slow enough pace that you should be able to try and keep up. Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer Had a very shiny nose 
Okay? And by now, from the singing, even if you're just following along with the singing, you should be noticing the memory effect that I've described to you of how do we keep track of where we're singing and where the words go relative to the chords changes. Your mind already has that auditory memory. We're accessing that memory by singing along. So now we're ready to look at line three of the song. And if we look at line three of the song, you'll see that it's just two times through the pattern, the strumming pattern, but this time all on the G7 chord. So let's just give that a try. And if you ever saw it... There's line three. Very, very simple, just two times through the pattern. We don't change chords at all. Now in the line four, what we're going to do is the same thing. We're just going to go over this line. And what I'm suggesting to you is as you're practicing and learning the song, go over each line a few times until you feel a little bit comfortable with it. Back the lesson up and just play along with me as many times as you need to. I don't mind. I won't get tired. Uh, now we're going to do the same exercise, but with line four. And in line four, we see it's kind of a similar structure to line two. It starts off with a measure of G, uh, with a, a pattern of G7, and then we play the pattern on C. So, you would even say it goes. Can do that one more time. You would even say it goes. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to put line three and line four together, just like we did with line one and line two, and that's going to be our next little small chunk of the song. So here's line three and line four, starting at And If You Ever Saw It. And if you ever saw it, you would even say it glows. Okay, there's lines three and four. Let Now, let's uh, go back to the top, and we're going to slowly work our way through all four lines, going at a nice even pace. We've worked through lines one and two, we've worked through lines three and four, and try keep to keep singing along, and try to keep singing along in your head or out loud, whatever you can manage. And don't worry, don't worry about your singing, we're not judging your singing. Okay, we're going to go right back to the top, and we're going to try all four lines. Rudolph the Red Nosed Reindeer Had a very shiny nose And if you ever saw it You would even say it goes And that's all four lines. Very good. And now you can just go back and work through the lesson another time if you need to uh, to, to lock in anything that you feel shaky about, okay? But y y if you go through it a few times slowly, as we've gone through it, you're, gonna, uh, you're going to start to feel comfortable pretty quickly. Now, what I want to do is I want to point out something to you, some magical little secret about music in general. If you look closely at the screen, you'll see that the chords and structure of the next four lines are exactly the same as the first four lines that you've already learned. And this is a super common phenomenon in music. We use a lot of repetition. What we're going to do is, when you, as soon as you're ready, we're going to work our way through the whole chorus, starting at line one, and we're going to play all the way through all eight lines, because the structure of the second four lines is exactly the same as the structure we've already learned and practiced. So let's try this together. Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer Had a very shiny nose And if you ever saw it, you would even say it glows. All of the other reindeer used to laugh and call him names. They wouldn't let poor Rudolph join in any rain. Okay, so today we work through a step-by-step -step process for a beginner guitarist to quickly learn Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer. I know we just did the chorus. Uh, there's also the B section, uh, then One Foggy Christmas Eve. So stay tuned. I'm going back into Santa's workshop to prepare part two, the B section, and I'll be posting that very, very soon. In the meantime, there's lots here for you to practice, and if you spend a little time on the chorus, 
what you're going to find is the uh, the B section, which has a few more chords in it, is going to be way easier than what you just did because of the work we're doing today. Uh, I will be back down the chimney in the wink of an eye. I hope you're enjoying the lessons, and if you are enjoying the lessons and having fun, please subscribe to the channel. It means a lot to me in the world of YouTube. I'm Bonner, and I hope you'll visit Bonner Guitar Channel again soon. Thank you.